Welcome back. Welcome back. Once again, this is Rod Powell on the You Should Get a License podcast edition, your number one source for information, education, and inspiration on the most underrated career opportunity in business today. That is a career in insurance and financial services. Very excited about our guest uh, today. This uh, young woman is a 22-year veteran professional in this business. And uh, what's really exciting is, you know, many times, you know, when we're speaking to uh, guests on, on the platform, we're talking to agents or we're talking to people who are in sales capacities that are that are independent, you know, that are um, working in, in, in an area where there may be familiarity as far as, you know, what you may have seen, you know, just if you're someone who's, you know, going down the street and you see your local, you know, Allstate or State Farm office, uh, but she works in a in a field, one, employee benefits that we don't get to talk to a lot of people in. And two, you know, on 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 the corporate level as an executive, uh, which is also a very powerful place to be as well. And really doing business in a big way, doing some some major things, very involved, uh, not only on, on the professional business side, but very involved on the community side. Uh, with Naya National African American Insurance Association, I want to welcome to the platform uh, a good friend of mine, uh, a great friend of, of yours as well. After this conversation, Miss Natasha Dorsey. Natasha, how you doing? Ooh, I'm good now. Ooh, that was nice. <laughs> yes, yes. No, look, a, a, excited to to have you here. Um, you know, I, I I feel like you know, there's probably about four or five different conversations. You know, on this platform, where I say, yeah, you know, we met through Benghazi. But I met you through Ngazi as well. You know, she she's always the the, the connection there, and um, you know the the Black Black Friday event in, in DC. Before we kind of jump into our conversation, I just want to take a minute because what what you do is a little bit different. If you could just share, you know, on our platform, um, what area of the industry do you specialize in? What what do you do on a, on a day to day basis? And 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 you know, how how's your workflow look? Sure. So I am a consultant for the number two global consulting firm. I'm not going to say their name because, you know, I didn't get permission. Um, but as a consultant, I work with employers and we work with uh, all the different carriers to find them the best rates for benefits. Uh, strategy is big time for us. There's so many things in the benefits arena and constantly you're hearing from employees my, my employer doesn't offer good benefits, right? This is what we're here to do, to show them what's going on in the marketplace, uh, what carriers are doing, what their rating is. Would we recommend writing business with them? It's a huge relationship-driven organization. We have to constantly talk to HR and help them through anything, like from health insurance all the way down to the voluntary benefit critical illness policy. So Everything benefits, medical, dental, vision, life, disability, work site stuff, which is like critical illness, accident, whole life insurance. And there's so many other things that are popping up. Like I spend a lot of time on pet insurance, things like that. They're coming out because during COVID, obviously people got their, their new kids are pets and the pets are now plants. So there may be a benefit for plants eventually, but that's the benefit space. And I spend, I would say... Q4, which is now, is the time where there are no 40-hour work weeks. You're working until you're done. Um, not necessarily that's the ask, but in order to get open enrollments, taking care of benefit guides out in the hands of employees so they can make their decisions, which is once a year and very important, we have to spend the time and, and the hours and make sure we're peer reviewing everything and, and putting in that effort for the volume. Yeah, no, look, that's, that's a lot, right? It's a, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, you know, normally when we think about insurance, whether it be, you know, life insurance or we think about health insurance, you know, we think about it, you know, from an individualistic standpoint, right? Auto insurance, homeowners insurance. You think of it from an individualistic standpoint, but where you're working is you're working with with organizations. You're trying to really look at the bigger picture of 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 everyone there how, how would you know how do how, how would you kind of you know explain the difference between working with groups versus working with individuals from, from your your perspective 
So I've always been group. <laughs> so um, from a rating perspective, you get way more advantage from the risk. You're spreading a risk amongst a group of people. Mm-hmm. So from a life insurance perspective, I can speak personally. I have you know, car insurance and, and whole life with my auto insurance carrier, but they're underwriting just me. Mm. So they're taking a look at what's going on with Natasha. Is she dealing with any type of chronic illnesses? Should we, you know, increase her premiums? Because that claim is definitely going to happen, but may happen sooner than we predict it to happen. Whereas on the group side, we're taking a census from that employer group and we're sending it to the carriers and they're rating based on the group. So there could be someone in the group who has, you know, a chronic illness, may have a short life expectancy, but that insurance carrier is betting on, well, that one claim is not going to like spin the group out of control and have terrible rates because we're going to get healthy bodies in there and the premiums, we can, you know, put that in the stock market and make more money off of it to make that group sustainable. So that's, that's more or less the comparison. And I, I would say it applies to every line of coverage, you know, health insurance, obviously is out of control, which is why the federal government had to get involved with the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. And, you know, people that were buying the insurance needed it and they were using it. Those that don't were healthy, young. They're like, I don't need that. And we need the healthy mix to go with the unhealthy mix to make things a little bit more affordable. So that, that would be my comparison for group versus individual. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah. So the company is saying, Hey, look, instead of just looking at you know, Natasha, or they're just, or just looking at Rod, they're saying, Hey, look, we can look at, you know, all 500 of these people and just kind of base it on the average and move forward, move forward accordingly. I I was mentioning before we started recording how your, your job, right. You're, you're vice president with an organization, um, consulting, working with large groups, you work for a, a, a very, very large uh, company, corporation. But most people don't know that your job exists <laughs> in, the, in this industry. Um, before I get into how you how you got into this space, because you've been you've been around for a while, right? Yeah. Yes. But why don't people know that that a career track like yours, why is that, that not common knowledge? Why don't they know it exists? So I'll correct my title because anybody from my company watching, they're going to be like, she ain't vice president. I'm assistant vice president. Assistant I'm- ADP. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Policies that I ain't tell him that. But anyway. Um, right. No. I, I said you it. make such a valid point because. I have family members that to this day ask me, you still work at the bank? I haven't worked at the bank since 1999. Like, what are you talking about? So I don't think that it's ever a topic of discussion. Uh, No one ever has asked me, what do you do? And how did you get into that field? It's, you know, people like to talk about themselves most times. And especially in the Black community, I don't have any friends that, you know, we, we sit and talk about this. I've had one person ask me in the 22 years about the Affordable Care Act and I lit up and I'm like, oh my God, we're talking about that. You know, I talked to an attorney one day and he was talking about, oh yeah, I want to learn about ERISA. And, and I, I lit up like, you know what ERISA is? Like, that's mm-hmm. awesome, right? Because it isn't, and it's not interesting. Let's be honest. It's, yeah. it's morbid. And I used to work for a life and disability insurance company for 10 years. So imagine going out and doing employee meetings and you're talking about life insurance. And and no one wants to talk about that, but it's not if, it's when. Everyone has that date that is going to happen. So we need to talk about it and we need to know like, hey, your employer is providing this for you as part of your total rewards. Yay, employer, right? Mm -hmm. And you could leave a legacy. You could put your kid's name down, your wife, husband, whomever, spouse as a beneficiary to help continue the legacy after you're here to be that lump sum of money to continue to pay the bills, college tuition, mortgages, so on and so forth. And I got heckled a lot. There was always one employee in the audience like this as Marvin. You know, you have to spice it up a little bit. So I don't think that people find it interesting. And as I mentioned before, we got on the the podcast, 
I feel like there's been a shift since COVID. I am very happy being an employee. I feel like I'm heard. I feel like I'm learning so much where it felt before like stuff was hidden from me and I couldn't learn it because they didn't want me to learn it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to share. And I probably, I ain't going to say probably, I, I was always upset after work. So I don't think people wanted to talk to me about what I do. Uh, my son, I have a son who's 23 today. It's his birthday. And Happy birthday, 23. Yes, every day I would come home exhausted and upset. And, you know, it was a trying day. So you think he wants to hear about insurance as a career path? Absolutely not. So I would say anyone watching this, hit me up on LinkedIn. I mean, it, it, insurance is a very lucrative career. And you can learn so much and it's vast, right? I'm in benefits and you could get lost in benefits alone. I don't even know risk. I want to learn risk. I want to learn personal lines. You know, I wish I knew how to read my car insurance. I'm just taking it because I have to, <laughs> you know, I could be underinsured. I could be overinsured. Right. So it's, it's definitely a career path that I would recommend, but I would say three, four, five years ago, I probably wouldn't have, but yeah. things are changing. I, I, I think that uh, you, you said something um, in kind of speaking about explaining, you know, what you do to people. Um, I think it's, it, it's a thing of individuals, you, when you're talking to companies and they're thinking about insurance, right? And they're thinking about putting their plans together. They're looking at it from a standpoint of how is this going to improve our operations, right? How is it going to <clears throat> in, enhance you know, our, our retention, our employee morale, productivity, how's it going to help our bottom line, you know? And that's number one. <laughs> that's number one, right? At the, at the top is, you know, hey, you know, with, what, what kind of percentage increase are we getting this year? Or, or can we not get, right? right. Um, that's where the voluntary comes in. You know, I'm a voluntary guy. So, right? <laughs> uh, but um Individuals, I think in, in today's climate, do you feel like the employees are more receptive to what the companies are offering? Like from a standpoint of, are they seeing it in some of the same ways, like outside of just being life insurance, but with the conversations about generational wealth? And you, you mentioned the word legacy. That's why I wanted to bring that up. Like with, with the conversations about legacy and, and establishing that for the future and really utilizing your benefits or utilizing your insurance in such a way where it's going to ultimately improve the quality of your life. Are you seeing that as, as more uh, of, a, of, a, of an impactful uh, maybe topic that, that makes the conversation more receptive to, to employers and, and to employees for that matter? Great question, honestly. So since I've been in the business for 22 years, the way that we do open enrollment meetings has shifted. COVID really put a damper on that. So I did a lot of in-person meetings where I would fly across country to certain facilities where I had employer groups that had multiple locations. And I would go to all of their locations throughout the United States. And people would come to those meetings and they would sit in the meetings and they would ask questions because that's your one time a year to, unless you have a family status change, to delve into what the offering is. And the employer probably made some changes because you mentioned bottom line, rates do increase. They're not necessarily going down, which I've seen it happen before, um, but not often. But since COVID, we've switched to online meetings. Uh, where I work now, I haven't personally done any meetings and I enjoy presenting because what I find is when you're one-on-one, -on -one, because we have what we call the, the big meeting where everyone's sitting in a room and then we mm -hmm. have office hours where an employee can come in and sit with me one-on-one -on -one and just ask me questions without everyone at their job knowing what they want to ask me. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Um, and then, but there's some that still do it, but I haven't personally had that experience in the past year where I've gone out and done an in-person meeting. And then we also have virtual systems where you go on and you just click what you want. There's uh, PowerPoint presentations, there's webinars. I don't feel like, I, mean, I know we have to get away from all the traveling and all of that in the face-to-face -face meetings, it, but it's very hard to get through to people because what I hear 
talking to my friends and just by happenstance, because obviously every Q4 has been hard. It's busy. And I talk to people and I'm like, so are you doing open enrollment? And they're like, oh, I don't care about that. Uh, you know, I'll just pick a plan. And I'm like, do you realize what goes into this? The hours upon hours of meetings that I have with human resources, that they're going through the benefit guide with a fine tooth comb, that we're sending it back to our design team for a million iterations, that there's like smoke coming out of everyone's ears. We're trying to program the system to make sure it works. To hear that is discouraging. Yeah. The other thing that I hear that upsets me is, oh, my benefits suck. Well, that's not true. Your benefits may not look like the way your benefits look when you worked for a younger organization, right? As I said earlier, there were no rules prior to the Affordable Care Act where you had to have health insurance. So if you're working for an organization and the average age is 50, your premiums are probably going to be high and your benefits are probably not going to be the greatest, right? That does not mean your benefits suck. Does not mean the insurance company sucks. It's the plan that your employer could afford to pick for that company. Yeah. The broker is like, we go to bat for these employers. I get renewals and I'm negotiating with these carriers. And that's what comes down to relationships. I used to be on the carrier side. I've been yelled at by brokers. I realized I don't want to be that broker. So I'm like, Look, make my job easier. You know what I need, right? Yeah. Come on, let's let's. What what can what can you do to make this better for them? And I have to make a good case. I have to look at the benefits. I have to look at the claims. I have to look at a lot to make it an argument for them to come down off the percentage increase. And that's what employees don't understand. It's not you may make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but your employer is paying probably twenty five thousand dollars for your right. benefit. Absolutely. So you t your total compensation might be 150 if you throw in benefits and then 401k, which is not my area, and then right. and other things, right? So that, that part is a little discouraging, but I mean, with evolution, who knows? There may be some way to get people to see like, oh, this is great, but the in-person meetings are dwindling. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. Like the, the in-person piece is certainly a big component of making sure that people are educated about how they can properly utilize those benefits versus just click, 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 click. Right. I'm going to just pick the cheapest. You're right. You know? <laughs> this sucks. Uh, did you read? <laughs> right, 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 right. See your job. two weeks. <laughs> but, you know, going, going back to, to, to another comment that you had, you had just made, you say, hey, look, you know, getting into this career, you know, it doesn't seem, you know, it doesn't seem ex exciting. You know, it seems kind of kind of dull, like from the outside looking in. Yeah. But I mean, you just meant, hey, you know, gotta you're traveling around from place to place, even even you know pre post you know pandemic era, uh, still having to have those conversations with the carriers, you know, back and forth, talking to the HR people. Um, look, I I know that there's some there's you know, hey, we're going, we're hitting the dinner, we're hitting an event, we're we hitting are a, right, yeah. right, sporting That's an event, fun. you know, <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's some elements of, of excitement there. Yeah, yeah. There's some elements of excitement there that 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 people miss, you know, a, along the way. Yeah. Um, I like to I like to think of it like what you do. You you mentioned you said I'm a consultant. You know, it's a it's a it's a strategy. Like when you say consultant, what do you what do you mean? Like for someone who is like, well, what does she do as a consultant? This is the this is the chance because I know when you say what you do and you say, hey, look, I'm a benefits consultant. People say to you. Do you do life insurance? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do yes. life insurance? Yes. What does yes. it mean to be a benefits consultant? A benefit consult, you have to really be learning every day. Mm -hmm. You you have to learn your client, first of all. What what are they what are they doing? What is their why? Right? What's their budget? What is their employee dem employee demographic? What are they looking to do? Because a lot of times they don't know, right? They're, they probably like, look, we need to save on costs, but we want the best total rewards for our employees. What does that mean? As a consultant, I need to know not only my clients, I need to know what's out in the marketplace, right? 
Where are their employees located? Can I put in a Kaiser plan in their regional and they've got people in remote areas? Probably not. Or I could put in a major medical plan and slice it with Kaiser for those who would appreciate an HMO that live in the areas like California and the DMV where I am, it might be beneficial. Um, there could be other things like they have executives, they're having a lot of turnover. Are there any executive plans that we could put in place to retain or even attract employees like that to their organization? Are they hiring a bunch of younger folks? You got to look at the demographics. What type of benefits are attracted to them? They're not really that concerned about health insurance, but they might want some voluntary work site benefits. They may want something like, you know, pet insurance. I, I was in California a couple of years ago and they constantly had evolution. They had a mobile gas program that they were putting in for employee benefits, where if you worked in a building that didn't have a garage, the mobile gas would come around and fill your tank up for you. And it was two cents cheaper than the nearest gas station. If you needed windshield wiper blades place, place they would do that. If you need the area tires, they would do that. They had like a, a an Uber for kids that you could put in as an employee benefit program, massage benefits. So you have to know what all is available. Has it been vetted? Can you contract with them? How long will implementation take? Because obviously that's gonna take up HR's time, right? Can it fit on their bin admin system? Is there a direct connection? So there's a lot that goes into it. I can't just sit down in front of an employer uh, you know, a CHRO and, and a CEO and a CFO and say, you should put in this benefit and not have every question already in mind to speak educationally and, you know, to them to say, hey, I, I know what this is and I've vetted it and I've even put it in for another employer and this is how it went. And if you want to talk to them as a reference, I'll definitely ask them. So that's pretty much what, uh, you know, a consultant does is you just got to make sure you know your clients and understand strategy and be on top of strategy and then yeah. you also know to go to when stuff breaks <laughs> that's right, right. <laughs> that's right that's right so so really just kind of a, a you you need to have a a, a holistic you know approach yeah. you know to doing business <laughs>